Hello everybody, I'm Annabella. I'm a first year medical student in Dublin and this vlog is my first week ever in a hospital on placement. So I'm on the geriatrics ward this week and this vlog will go through my experiences, my first ever blood taking, which is very exciting, and my first ever surgery. So if you think that would interest you, stick around and I hope you enjoy. And if you want to get in contact with me, you can send me a message over on my Instagram, um, which is linked down below or um, leave me a comment and I'll reply to you as soon as possible. So, I hope you enjoyed the vlog from me and Marlo. Bye! Hello, oh, it is Sunday night and I thought I'd take you through my lunch that I bring in the hospital tomorrow. Now, I've never been on work placement before in the hospital, so I don't know what the vibe is. So I'm just gonna bring a lot of food in case there's no restaurants or like we don't really get a lunch so I can just have something to go. So right now I'm drying out the salad because it was like, yucky and wet. I'm grilling some koishet, then I'm gonna cook one of these in the air fryer and I'm going to um, put it together like a little salad with some cucumber. So that's what I'm doing right now. And I'll let you know what else. I'm also gonna put some, I bought these olives to go in it. I know it's controversial. And some pickles. So that's what we're doing now. Got a little beverage. Some sparkling while you're with ice and lime to keep you going okay i'll let you know how it looks at the end bye are we pro or anti pickles in this house pro what did you say alex pro. <laughs> okay so alex is going to talk over what's happening here so oh the, i remember this this is the salad that she spent ages making so putting a bit of aubergine courgette <laughs> <laughs> Bit of peppers, bit of cucumber, um, and it looks delicious. It looks, it looks really good. Bit of um, tomatoes. I see we've got a bit of mango. That avocado is looking a bit funky. One <laughs> being that now. Bit of thing. And then, um, do you show? Okay, update. There's oh. no lid for the bowl. Cling film. Plastic, plastic, free. Oh, no, look, I told That like goes in. Look, I told you. Just show the top of it. Don't show the side. Oh, one. guys, that's not fitting. Okay. Cheese. <laughs> Yay. Got the cameras. First day of placement. I'm on the way home now from placement. It's like 3 p.m. It's a short day today. They weren't really that busy, but I had such a good day. Such a good first day. I'll talk to you about it when I get home. But I can't wait to go back in tomorrow. I got steak bloods for the first time. And it went so oh, it just went so well. I have such a nice group. Okay, absolutely starving though. I really underestimated the amount of food I brought in. Plus that salad was like not nice. The, the warm courgette, like, what do you call it? Wrinkled up all the lettuce and the mango went mushy. So it was not nice. And we were like, I didn't have a fork. So it was like awkward eating it. So I'm gonna have to rethink my food options for tomorrow. I'm gonna go into Little now and grab some food that I can cook at home. I'm doing like some some stuffed pasta. So I'll go in now. I'm gonna get some food because I am starving. We're standing up all day. I'm not used to standing up for that long, especially after we've been studying for exams so much. So my back and my shoes. I need to get new shoes. These shoes from Penny's. I'm not gonna cut it. I need like insoles or something because my feet were aching. So um, if I'm gonna do this for three more or four more weeks, I gotta get proper shoes. Okay, I'll give you the lowdown when I get home. Okay. <laughs> Hello, okay. So I'm going to talk about placement. My first ever day on placement ever. And it was a bit of a roller coaster. Okay, so we got in the morning and um, we were told to be in at seven o'clock and the placement, no one actually, um, we went to the ward and waited in the corridor in the ward, the five of us, like little 
newbies like penguins we're all huddled together just waiting for someone to come and pick us up um so we were there since like we went there at eight the first doctor came in at like quarter past eight and um she was like oh i'm just gonna get my things together which is fine and we didn't actually start um like the rounds until about 9 20 i'd say but then we started we met some really interesting people it was I'm in med elderly, so that's like taking care of all the elderly people. And they're all so lovely. Oh, they were telling us stories. They were funny. Like, it was just like such good vibes with all the people that we saw, um, all the histories and everything. It was all so interesting. And they were all just so friendly and they were smiling. And it was a really nice day. And then we stayed with the intern. And um, we went with the intern for a while and the intern let um, like guided me through taking my first ever bloods and I took them so you put on the tourniquet and uh, we felt where the brachial artery was and we there was a nice vein here and I used a I think it's called like a butterfly I butterfly IV or something butterfly like needle and you went like pretty much parallel in and then it started filling up with blood and you connected the little vial collected the blood and then when you're pulling it out you put a bit of cotton wool on top and pull out the needle and then you like cap the sharp and that was the first time i did it and the um the patient was like you're a lovely nurse and i was like ah! <laughs> i don't even like i'm just so happy that, that he thought i was experienced enough to be a nurse so he said that um it wasn't uncomfortable at all which maybe he was lying but it felt good to me and the intern was like oh well, good job um, and then one of my friends, Druva, he got to, um, this intern was so good. He was like such a good teacher and he was showing us around all the wards and he was like so hands-on and let us do, like talked us through all of these things. And Druva got to do a catheter with him, which was so cool. Like we've only ever taken like histories and stuff before, but the fact that we were actually able to like help and he was able to talk us through these and we were able to do them, it's just the coolest thing ever. Um, and then, we had lunch and we caught up with everyone else and yeah and now we're back um it was so much fun i i was like wrecked i just had some pasta with some pesto um and like watched the real high sides of beverly hills and fell asleep for about an hour but i'm feeling pumped now and i'm just going to um i have to finish one of my modules like an i took on an extra module called lifestyle medicine which is all about like smoking and diet and alcohol and things like that and you have to write a reflection for each module and then you get a certificate at the end so i've got to write the alcohol certificate now and then i've got one more thing one more final project to do after that so that's what i'm doing this evening very exciting and then i'm back up it actually the bus journey was so fine i like listened to harry styles and have my coffee and then by the time i got into town all of my other classmates got on the bus and we we're all on the bus together and it was, it was, oh, it was so fun. I can't wait to go back in tomorrow. Okay, I will talk to you tomorrow. Hopefully I have a great day then too. I'm so pumped. Okay, bye. Okay, don't mind me being Cinderella, literally feeding a bird out upon my hand. I couldn't believe this happened. Um, I had to go to the dentist in the morning. This is my journey. And in a minute, you will see, I had to get one of um, a filling redone and he completely numbed my mouth, which actually he only numbed one side of my mouth, which was probably worse because <laughs> you're about to see why in a minute. Okay, look at how gorgeous this view is in Tokyo. It's absolutely, absolutely amazing. So I'm on my way into the hospital so now. Beautiful. Guys, seriously, I'm on the bus, I'm about 20 minutes away, and thank God, thank God I have to wear a mask in the hospital because this is fine. This is fine. Hi, I'm Annabelle. I'm a first year medical student. This is not fine. Hi, I'm Annabelle. I'm a first year medical student. Seriously, it's so numb. I can't even feel it. Oh my god. Hi. No, stop. 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 Why? Hi. Hi, I'm Annabella. I 
I've got like two minutes. I just saw surgery. It was a cochlear implant. So it was like a hearing device that they implanted into um, the ear. And it was so cool. The surgeon was such a badass. She was so cool. She um, So they like cut up and the implant was like this big. And then they put a new one in. Day three done. And for some reason, for some reason Dublin bus do not take card. And I didn't take enough coins with me this morning. So I'm going to walk into town and then I'm going to get the Lewis home and then I'm going for a nice dinner. I had such a nice day today. I'm going to tell you the stories when I get home, but some funny stories. But all the old people were saying to us, they were like, just don't grow old, don't grow old. One woman was like, die young, it's much easier, it's much better. <laughs> so they all, a lot of them are really like depressed. I don't think it helps that they're like stuck in the bed, even though they need to, like to get better. And we're taking good care of them, it's just, it's kind of hard to see. A lot of them miss having their family around. And it's just, the ward is not a nice place to stay for a long time. Kind of gets you down. You can feel that the energy is quite low. But um, that's why it's so nice when we get to go up and talk to them. Um, I've had some great stories. Great stories. A lot of them are married like 60 plus years, so they were giving us all tips. And nearly like a lot of the people that we met were like, Are you not engaged? Ah, Jesus. One woman said, Just how many babies do you all have? I was like, None. Not for a very, very, very long time. Thank you very much. So, yeah, it was a really nice day. I got to see a surgery. So cool, cochlear. Got to see someone dissect the behind of someone's ear. So cool, that surgeon was such a badass. So yeah, okay, I'll tell you the stories when I get back. Hey! patients he's gone home wait well, yeah he's gone home so kind of sad to see him go me and him were talking a lot and he's my favorite patient so i'm sad i'm gonna be sad tomorrow because he was like the happiest person in, in the ward and i always say hello to him every morning goodbye to him every evening but i mean it's good that he's getting better obviously and he can go home it's just sad because i'm not gonna see him now Hopefully I'll see him again, not in the hospital, but in a different context. He's given me lots of advice. Yeah, bittersweet. So, um, yeah, I don't know. That was the thing. We had our first grand rounds. Um, three of my classmates had to present a case that they'd seen during the week. Then we had a picture of the week. And the picture of the week was that someone stepped on a nail. And because they had, um, some sort of neuropathy they didn't feel the nail and they end up getting an infection so that was cool um i mean it wasn't cool but the x-ray was cool and then we did a case leak and we didn't really have time to go into it yeah so that's what we did today 8 till 3 30 what's up seven hour seven and a half hour shift it was nice nice day today that's kind of it we didn't really get 
to do much. We took some histories. That was about it today. Went on the ward rounds. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go sleep for the next half an hour before I have to get off. Where's Marlo? Hiya! Oh, my goodness. Can I get a round of applause? Because my first week is officially over. It's Friday. Um, and it's been a great week. My first ever week in the hospital. My first ever bloods. My first ever surgery. And my birthday. So, it's. I think it's been a pretty good week. Um, I'm going to tell you a few stories from my reflections from my first week in the geriatrics ward. So first of all, I was telling you about my favorite patient. He was such a nice man. And I was just thinking like, we take a lot of things for granted. Like one of our patients, she's like nearly a hundred years old. And she was just saying, you take it for granted when you're well, that just this is what normal is. And then when you get sick, you just realize how lucky you were being well the whole time. And there's a lot of kind of reflections on the ward by the old people. And they, they tell us a lot of kind of, it's common knowledge, but it's just a lot more poignant coming from them. Um, so like small things matter so much in the geriatric ward. Like one of our patients had a stroke and he wasn't able to walk. Um, and he took like three steps yesterday and we were all so delighted that he was able to take three steps and he was saying like he took it for granted when he can walk and run and swim and now he can't it's such a big thing that you can just take those first few steps like, the small things are like the biggest victories um another patient we were talking to him today and i think a lot of I know a lot of people in the ward get lonely because it is kind of an isolating atmosphere. You're sick, you're a bit confused, you don't really know what's going on and you don't have your friends or your family around to support you. So it can be lonely. So that's why it's so valuable for us, especially when we get to talk to them and even to make their day a tiny bit better, just like they have someone to tell their stories to and to listen to them. I think it's such a big thing in the geriatric ward. Um, there was one man who said that we all made his day and he'd never forget us and he brought in a picture he got his wife to bring in his wedding picture and he showed it to us and that was just so incredible and it was like such a nice moment that he felt comfortable enough with us after one day to like show us this like personal photo from his life it was a really nice moment um yeah and we have a lot of like the one thing that I didn't realize would be so big was this thing called hospital acquired delirium and it's when like elderly people come in and they come in with like say a kidney infection or a UTI or um even like a fall and on a healthy person you'd like get better and you'd be out of the hospital in like five days say after your antibiotics but with an elderly person who has other like comorbidities like maybe dementia or they have osteoporosis or osteoarthritis or anything like that that small stress of an infection can make them like delirious and that five day stay can turn into one guy's been there for 90 days because he's just in a delirium he doesn't know where he is he doesn't know what's going on and they could even like almost go into a sort of like pseudo coma and then sometimes they just like come out of it so i think that's crazy and it's just like the stress how your body reacts to stress differently depending on what age you are or what like state of health you're in I thought that was crazy and um, I think it's also because when they're in the hospital even when they're at home and if they have like home help or they're in a nursing home they're doing like small tasks themselves like maybe they're making a cup of tea or like the dementia patients are like turning on the telly or walking even walking from like the bathroom back to the sofa they're doing independent small things themselves whereas when they come into the hospital they're three meals a day are brought to them they're not walking around they're not really talking they're not watching telly so i think their brain almost like switches onto autopilot and that's like a factor of where the delirium comes into i was talking to the registrar about that because i thought it was so interesting and he said yeah it's really it's 
really unfortunate when it happens because that's why they're trying to get the patients out quickly so that they don't have time to go into this delirium. So if you can get them in, get them sorted and get them out before their brain kind of goes into autopilot, that's the best thing for them. So yeah, we've had a really good time and I can't wait till next week because I feel like I've gotten into the swing of things now. Just stick on to the intern and that's the best thing. And always bring a stethoscope with you. Oh my goodness, we um, it was me and Druva walking around and I hadn't used a stethoscope all week so I just left it in my bag and I left my pen in my bag too. And we we're walking around with the consultant and he was like, oh quickly listen to him. Um, listen to this guy's lungs and I was like oh and I didn't have my stethoscope but feckin' Druva's stethoscope is missing one of the earbuds so he only has one ear in the stethoscope so we had to ask the intern to borrow hers and it was just like a bit embarrassing so always bring your stethoscope even if you don't think you'll use it because you will and you won't be able to listen to crackles in someone's lungs for the first time that is my advice to you a final piece of advice is what we've kind of heard through word of mouth is that you know, you see like in Grey's Anatomy and stuff, the doctors wear their stethoscopes around their necks. Only real doctors do that. The med students all keep it in the pocket. So you keep your stethoscope in your scrubs pocket. And then when you're a doctor, you put it around your neck. And that's kind of an unspoken rule from what I've heard around the hospital. So there's two pieces of advice. Always have your stethoscope, but never have it around your neck unless you're a doctor. Okay, that's the end of this week. And thank you so much for watching and sticking with it. And... Um, it's been a really good week and I'm on 90 subscribers, which I never thought I'd get to. So thank you everyone who's watching and I'll see you next week for my second week of geriatric medicine. Okay, I'll see you soon. Goodbye.